guys, I'm Detective Lots Gaming and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make a simple hashtag beginner's build and by that I mean I'm not going to use the catalyst cell, I'm not going to use any legendaries, I'm not going to use any lady lot stuff, and I try to make the build as simple as possible so that you guys can farm for it easier in the hunting grounds. As usual for the hammer user, we're going to start by getting the ammo's aid charts by completing the combos. And yep, let's try to find a way to add a special. There we go, jump and special and try to find a way to complete the combos yep i think it's blundering there we go here's some free hits to the beginner and it's staggered then we're just going to keep hitting it and primary attacks as frequent as possible so they can generate frost strikes and this behemoth is from the twilight sanctuary which means this bird right here will be able to carry you guys to the twilight sanctuary as well it's going to get enriched let's not get close it's half hp by now we're going to cast the special first because it's almost out yep the special is out just pick it up there we go, give it through that one, the beam is slowing down which means we can get a little bit of oh, give it through that one. Alright, so this build comes with survivability, ability but that's, that does not mean you need to tank all of the hits. Try to get the attacks in again, oh no I missed. When you miss the attacks there's no need to reload, just complete the combos you're going to gain a full ammo at the shot. There we go, primary attacks, get the combos in, it's gonna die soon. What it's gonna do now, it's gonna explode. Get the kit in, evade, iceborne, is dead. Easy. So there's a behemoth on level 19, Twilight Sanctuary is supposed to be tough because it's the highest level for a normal kind of hunt. And yeah, the behemoth still dies pretty easily. So let's just check out the build real quick right here. There we go. So here's the build guys, and as usual, since this is the beginner's build as I have mentioned earlier in this video, I'm not going to use the catalyst cell, I'm not going to use any legendaries, I'm not going to use any lady lot stuff, and I try to make the build as simple as possible so that I guys can farm for it easier in the hunting grounds. If you take a look at the equipments right here, every single one is very easy to craft, the barriers, the amber main, the gnasher, every single one is available in the lower level hunting grounds, which means you can farm and craft it easier. If you take a look at the perk summary right here, I know it's quite random, but believe me, it works very effectively. But before we go through the perk summary, let's go through the key players to this build and how you use this build. And of course, it's from the unit effect of the weapon. After spending ammo, generate two frost sprites. You spend two ammo, you're going to generate four frost sprites with a maximum of four sprites. And at four sprites, you're going to gain 240 bonus damage directly to your power score. That will help a lot with your damage and how you use this will is actually how you use the hammer you need to prime your attacks most of the time so that you can gain more damage from priming attacks and when you prime attacks you're going to spend an armor which means you're going to generate two frost sprites giving additional damage to your attack and that is why i can deal pretty high damage on my attacks and yep that's the key player to this build let's go through the perk summary evasive fury and molten as your source of attack speed if you watch my previous videos on the builds you're going to notice is that Evasive Fury and Molten, as I've always mentioned in the video, are the two most consistent attack speed booster in the game. Molten will give you 15%, Evasive Fury will give you another 15%, that will give you a total of 30%, and it is actually more than enough for most battles. You're going to evade through attacks most of the times, and you're going to attack the behemoths most of the times. When you attack the behemoths, you're going to generate Molten Hearts, and you, when you pick him up, you're going to gain 15% bonus attack speed. So those are the attack speed bonus, and there's Tenacious, Tough, and Iceborne. Half and as one will increase your health to 1.7k and tenacious will increase your damage by 2% for every 100 current HP which means you at full HP you're going to get 34% bonus damage. Tenacious, tough and as one is a combo for survivability and damage. Conditioning comes with a weapon so you cannot change that one. Overpower is actually really good for the hammer because hammer is the best staggering weapon in the game. Bringing overpower with you will increase your damage by a lot because you're going to stagger the behemoth most of the times. Especially with the little one that I bring with the weapon right here which I'm going to show you later. Parasity and Rage, another combo for your survivability and damage. So when you take damage from the behemoth, you're going to activate Parasity and Rage. Parasity will decrease the damage taken by 20% and delayed. And then you're going to gain 5% lifesteal for 10 seconds. That's actually very good for survivability because lifesteal is the best in the game. Being able to regenerate your health back is the best. And combined with Iceborne, you're going to regenerate your lost health in no time. And Rage right here will increase your damage by 20% when you take damage, which means when you take damage from the Behemoth, you're going to reduce the damage taken, have lifesteal for 10 seconds, and then increase your damage by 20 seconds. So that's a very great combo and sturdy right here because I know this build is for the beginners. You're not going to be able to evade through attacks most of the times. Most of the times you're just going to tank the kit because sometimes we just don't know how to time our attacks. So sturdy right here will be able to help you a lot with completing your combos when you miss your timing with the behemoth attacks and that's actually very good. So that's 
all for the perk summary. Let's go through the build, the Ember main with Evasive Fury, Ganesha with Sturdy, Boreas with Tenacious, and there's another Ganesha with Overpower. And here I'm using the Panga Shrine as my Lantern with the Molten Cell. If you want to switch the Lantern into something else, that's fine. If you feel the attack speed is lacking, you can always switch to Strike. And if you want more survival ability, you can always switch to Scorn. But I'm going to stick with Panga if, because if you notice the weapon, the Omni Cell and the lantern right here everything is frost element which means you're going to be able to freeze the behemoth very easily with this frost type of equipment although you're free to switch of course and as for the omni cell i don't really recommend any other one apart from tempest but ice bone seems to be the best choice for this one and here is the weapon with rage and parasitic mighty lamb breaker you can get this one from the slayer's path and the weighted crown you can also get this one for the slayer's path so the weighted crown right here will increase your stagger damage on the other parts apart from the head to be able to deal the same amount of stagger damage as hitting the head so this is actually very good for knocking down the behemoths and that is where overpower is very effective with this one so that's a bit guys Alright, so let's continue our battle to the next behemoth is the troublemaker right here the town of the grass pick up the patrol chest and the weapon and armor that can be crafted from this one is actually pretty decent and i use them a lot too so it's a good behemoth we're going to start with the special i missed that one okay here's the cast of the special okay there we go since i'm not really that good on this behemoth's attack pattern and since it's very indecisive i'm not going to get close to it when it attacks and you guys can do the same if you don't know about the behemoth's attack pattern just do it how you do it because the hammer right here is good at staggering so getting a few hits in to stack up the stagger threshold is actually pretty good keep hitting it i missed that one prime attacks but that's fine all right that's a fourth hp gone if it through that one i think i'm going to miss it there we go i got hit that's why i hit the draws very much body slam should be easy here's our chance to keep hitting the behemoth if it through that one i did not if it through that one Activate your special because it's gone. Iceborne so that we can heal. And here's instant healing. Back to full HP. There we go. And it's slowed down. Let's see if it through that one. And it's going to do the teleport thing. So you're going to evade through that one as well. Okay. When it teleports, stand behind one leg. So that the beam does not hit you. Here's your chance to keep hitting the beam with the prime attacks. There we go. Staggered. And I missed. When you miss your attacks with the slam, just keep slamming it with the zero ammo. That's why you're going to regenerate all of your ammo with it. And keep hitting it. It's slowing down. So you're going to be able to land a few free hits. Alright, laser beams again. Should be pretty easy. Right on the toenails. That's lucky. And it's gonna get staggered soon. Never mind, it's dead. I missed the special again. Alright, let's try to get our special in. The slamming attack. I mean, I missed my slamming attack. Okay, so that's the one of the troublemakers in the game. Pretty easy. Considering this is the biggest build that we're talking about right here. And as for the nice behemoths, I feel like I'm not going to fight a lower level one, of course. I'm not going to fight the Rift Stalker. And the Stormclaw comes out at level 20. However, the equipment that can be crafted from the Rift, I mean, the Stormclaw is actually very minimal. There is the helmet. The helmet is pretty good. The body armor is actually pretty good too. But maybe Shroud should be a good choice because it can craft even much more decent late game type of equipments. And there should be a patrol chest right here. There we go. Spin around. Drop down. Especially on the helmets and the body armor on the Shroud. It's actually very good for late game. Especially the helmet of course. So let's go through this battle right here as usual, starting with a special so that we can gain bonus damage. It flies. Give it through that one. So the straw is actually pretty nimble. So we need to find our way to get the hits in. Give it through that one. Here's our chance to get a few hits in. Maybe a full combo. There we go. I miss again. Alright, time to slam without the ammo to recharge our ammo to charge. Alright, so a few hits in and it looks like the Stroud is broken. But I'm thankful for that, so that I can land a few hits in. Okay, a fourth HP gone. It's going to get through the blackout mode. Easy. Let's see where it goes. Special, because we're out. There we go. Prime some attacks. Evade through that one. I did not evade through that one because I took damage. But that's fine because we are parasitic. And it's slowed down. It should be easy to evade through that one. It's getting staggered soon. 
And I miss again. I miss a lot in this battle. Alright, let's slam without the ammo again to get the full Aether Charge ammo. Prime your attacks. Alright, it's out of the enraged motion, so here's a few free hits again. I feel like I'm going to miss this one. Oh god. Evade through that one. Okay, it's time to slam without the ammo again. Oh, that tickles. I think it's gonna get enraged. Okay. Trying to land the slam attack to gain our ammo. There we go, the part breaks. Here's our chance that's going to hit. And it's gonna get staggered soon. Should be pretty easy now. Alright, this should be the final combo. Should be. Keep hitting it. Never mind, it's not that. Let's keep hitting it again. It's gonna die. There we go. Pretty easy, huh? That's the other troublemaker in this game, and it's Twilight Sanctuary, as I've mentioned earlier in this video. Since I can use this beginner's build in this Twilight Sanctuary, means that you're going to be able to use this hammer build in the Twilight Sanctuary, up to the Twilight Sanctuary. There will be another variation on this build, with a higher level build from higher level behemoths of course but since this is the bigger speed i'm going to stick with this one and that's all for the video i hope you guys enjoy it please don't forget to like subscribe it's free and you can always subscribe thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next video